So the Charge 4 in stereo, does anything magical happen when you add two mono drivers with no crossover and play them in stereo? Is that the secret juice that JBL has banked on to overcome what a lot of people are unhappy about? You take a stereo speaker, you turn it into mono. You not only turn it into mono, you take that mono speaker, you stick it on the right hand side, it's not even centered. People really don't know where they are. It's almost a little bit trippy. But of course, surely it is all worth it because it's gonna be fantastic in stereo. Well, that's the hope, isn't it? So just before I start my quick stereo tests to say I'm not doing a loudness test, I know probably a lot of people are thinking, but please tell me, do two charge fours go as loud in stereo as extreme two? Can I get two charge fours and it's like having an extreme two, except I can have really wide stereo. I can't do a loudness test because one of my JBL charge fours is faulty. The connect light doesn't come on and it's one decibel quieter than my other JBL charge four. So I'm not gonna do an all out loudness test until I've replaced it with a working JBL charge four and they still don't have any other colors in the UK than black. So I'm not gonna get the second one until I've got a different color because it's quite confusing having several black speakers, especially as one of my Charge 3s is also black. However, I will say from the testing I've done so far, my guess, and it's not gonna be far out, is that it's gonna be about as loud. It may be slightly quieter, maybe slightly louder than an Extreme 2. There's not gonna be a lot in it. So basically, two Charge 4s, about the same loudness in terms of sheer decibel peaks, which of course with those two speakers is gonna be the bass gonna play about the same level. However, I will also say, before I quickly get on with my testing, when you have Connect Plus rather than the older Connect, which I loved, and I'm not so in love with the Connect Plus, unless you're really having loads of speakers in party mode, every time you start stopping and playing your music, there's a sync delay between the two speakers, about six to eight seconds, every single time. I've only got to pause it a couple of seconds, start again, there's a sync delay. It's fine if you just continue to be playing, but as soon as you stop and then start again, it's taking about six or eight seconds to sync up. It does, after a while, get a bit, little bit annoying. Not least because you've already had to go in the app to set them in stereo. So I should say before I start my stereo test, whenever you play Connect Plus, which of course is what the JBL Challenge 4 is, when you play those speakers in stereo, you have to go in and set them to stereo in the app or it's gonna be playing party mode However, in terms of does it work well with the app, because there has been problems. Well, I personally had with the app and playing stereo, it does consistently work. It takes a few moments while you wait for them to find both speakers and then you can set them as a stereo pair. So one single charge four versus two charge fours in stereo. Does anything magical happen?
also, unfortunately, nothing magical happens when you add two charge fours in stereo. We was hoping with a single driver on each speaker, something magical was going to happen. It was going to be so much cleaner and so much, and so much more of a stereo image. It sounds clean. It sounds decent enough, but nothing magical happens over just playing a single charge four. And in some ways, a charge four in its own rather than two in stereo sounds a little bit cleaner. However, when you play two in stereo, it gets a little bit louder. Okay, let's assume you're matching volumes. You're still getting a bigger bass. Not massive, but just as in my party mode video, same thing again, now I'm testing it in stereo mode. You're basically getting another decibel on your bass peak. And it's actually a little bit deeper. Single charge four, two charge fours in stereo. So a bit more of a bass slam, and it's going a little bit deeper. But along with, you're losing your high end of what was already not great for clarity. You know, vocals do hang forward. It sounds fine on a quick listen. I really liked it on my first impressions. The more I hear it, the more I'm hearing stuff that is lacking. One thing that is definitely lacking is clarity. The vocals do hang forward, so it helps to disguise that a little bit. But when you hear it in AB against, say, the Charge 3, which was already lacking in high-end clarity, it becomes even more obvious that it's a little bit more veiled than the Charge 3. And that's just accentuated when you go to two in stereo. The single stereo. So you're losing your high end. You're getting a bigger bass slam. You're getting a deeper bass, but you are losing a little bit of clarity. But of course, two in stereo, you do get a nice, decent stereo image. It does give an impression of a little bit more detail. That does help to make up for the actual loss in high end clarity. Although that's obvious, is more of a bassy sound in stereo. When you add your second charge four, it's not quite as bad as maybe Looking at a sheer chart like this would give you the impression of, because if you're sitting in the middle of them, you're getting a proper stereo image, that added detail does hide some of the loss in clarity. Having said that, you can still hear there's a loss of clarity, not just because it's even more bassy for passive radio, it's actually going deeper when you go to Connect Plus. So if you are a bass head and you are buying this because you listen to bass heavy tracks, you just want a nice bass thump and you found the charger was missing, then you will probably like the Charge 4. But if you're listening for some clarity, you might not. But the point about this video, what happens when you put two in stereo, nothing magical happens, but it's still a decent stereo image. You're getting a bigger bass thump than you had with a single. Not just a bigger thump because there's more passive radiators, a bigger thump because it's actually deeper. Yeah, I've got to say, disappointing. It's not magical. In some ways, I prefer playing the Charge 4 on its own. It sounds cleaner a little bit more balanced as you put them into Connect Plus mode and you go into stereo, dramatic drop off in clarity at the high end, rolling off in the mids. It's all about the bass. No treble. There's a song there somewhere. But if you like bass heavy music, I'm not saying it sounds terrible in any way. It's just the sound signature is very bass heavy, even more bass heavy with two charge fours in stereo than a single charge four. Don't personally like that. Find it very tiring, and I'm really, you know, I'm looking for the treble button. In the old days, you would have had a treble button, wouldn't you? And you'd be able to turn it straight up. But it's bass heavy. It is not something that you're going to say, oh my God, it's terrible. If you like bass, it's still, you know, quite nice sounding. It's just you're going to have to like that sound signature. Very bass heavy. If you liked the extreme one, but didn't need all that high end, you know, maybe this is the sort of speaker for you, you know, you do get a stereo image. So I don't wanna say there's anything awful, just for my personal taste. Yeah, it's a bit too, a bit too bass heavy. There's nothing natural in that particular sound signature. Okay, how does it sound? Two charge fours in stereo against two charge threes in stereo.
I'm not going to say, you know, two charge fours is better than the two charge threes in stereo or all the other way around because they have very different sound signatures. Two charge fours in stereo. You know, it sounds okay, very, very bass heavy. You have an obviously veiled high end. There's very little in the way of any real clarity or detail. The Charles Threes, much thinner sound, much brighter sound. Don't forget the Charles Threes already have a recess treble. So when I say sounds clearer and brighter than the Charge Four, there's something really not quite right, I would say, going on here with the Charge Four. So I'm not gonna say one is better than the other, very different sound signature. But if you did like the Charles Threes in stereo, I'm gonna say that you're probably not gonna like the Charge Fours in stereo. Again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Charge 4. If you like it bass heavy, for its size, it's pretty impressive what it does in the bass, but it's all about the bass. Now, I have to say, well, you know, you want to know what it sounds like against the Extreme 2. A lot of people, are, you know, are always, it's always the one below, two of those against the one above. So two Charge 4s in stereo versus one Extreme 2. So for me, two charge fours does not replace an extreme two. It's quite impressive that in terms of around the bass peak and in terms of bass slam, it can match to a great extent the extreme two. There's not a lot in it. You may prefer one over the other, but it does a good job of matching the bass in the extreme two. That's impressive. However, the extreme two is a much fuller sound. There's a lot more going on. There's more detail. It's a brighter, more sparkly sound. I think it's a no-brainer. For me, personally, I would, if I would have to choose between them, I would rather have an Extreme 2 than two Charge 4s. Even if I like it bass heavy, I'm getting bass heavy with Extreme 2, but it's a, it is a more satisfying sound, I think, to me. Obviously, everyone is gonna have their own opinion, I'm saying, as far as my tastes go, and I think I can say for a lot of other people, I don't really see an argument for having two Charge 4s 
against one extreme two. Other than you can separate them out and have a decent stereo image. However, you're going to lose a hell of a lot of sparkle and clarity, which is a lot of the fun of the music. It's not a serious listen, is it, extreme two? But it, it is a fun listen. Now, I have been saying a lot of nice things about the mini rigs. I've got a 2.2 setup, so I've got two mini rigs, two subwoofers, which is actually the best way to match them because one mini rig matches one subwoofer. Not as you would think because they sell 2.1 bundles, you would assume one subwoofer matches two mini rigs and they don't. So if you want to play them at full volume, you've got to go 2.2. Now, without subs, because they are quite satisfying as a stereo pair, I quite enjoy them. I'm not saying it's a perfect speaker in any way. However, I'm saying it's quite hi-fi in the way it delivers detail and clarity. So I thought it'd be interesting to stick this into the mix of the stereo comparisons. So mini rigs in stereo versus charge fours in stereo. I think the mini rigs hold up pretty well, surprisingly well against the charge fours. Just bear in mind, they do not go. I'm playing them in low gain mode because that's the high quality mode. I could have played them in high gain to match the volume of the charge fours, but to me, it's pointless because that's not what the mini rig is about. It's about high quality sound. In low gain, I'm looking around 65% volume to match around the 40% volume on the charge fours. They are not the same, they do not go as loud. Let's get that out of the way. So I'm not saying. For a party speaker, one is in any way equating to the other. It's clearly a more of a party speaker, it will go louder, the charge force. However, what does surprise me is that bass, although it doesn't have the bass slam of the charge fours, it really does hold up well without the subwoofers, just with the two mono speakers. This is when two mono speakers actually work well as two mono speakers. And if I forget about the bass peak, so the bass peak is what, like three decibels off in terms of even when I've got a higher volume playing on the, on the mini rigs. So it cannot match, I'm getting that way, the bass does, bass slam, what you feel, what you, you know, the actual punch does not match in any way the charge forward. But in terms of a fuller, deeper bass, 
which is often the holy grail of bass. It's not about, for a lot of people, for some people it is about the punch, but for a lot of us, it's about a deeper, warmer, more satisfying bass. In terms of that, if you measure them, say, at 40 and 50 hertz, and not the bass peaks of like 65 hertz, then at 50 hertz, I'm still getting 21 decibels on the mini rig, 25 decibels. The mini rig is actually four decibels louder when you start getting into the, into the deeper bass, even without the higher end punch. At 40 hertz, it's like 13 decibels on the particular tracks that I've just played, higher. You've got a fuller bass. It's, it's not rolling off as dramatically as the Charge 4 does. The Charge 4 seems to be really tuned to a bass peak and there's a real rapid roll off. So although the Mini Rig in stereo, it does have a bit of a thin mids, you know, I would have preferred a more slushy, thicker mid, but it does have a nice high end to make up for that. So it has a fuller bass and a decent high end. It does have a lot of detail, which goes a long way to making up for the lack of mids. So I'm just gonna point out, it is a bit thin in the mids, but overall, it's a really pleasing listen. For me, I'm saying, for me personally, that's how I see it. If you want a party speaker, it's gonna be the Charge 4. Now, just for a bit of fun, I'm doing a comparison of all these speakers. I'm throwing in the Flip 3s and I'm throwing in the Flip 4s. So a quick comparison of all of my JBLs together with the Mini Rig. So just to quickly show you, this is the original track. I think the most interesting thing as the takeaway here is if you look between 300 hertz, 9,000 hertz, around that range, you know, the full mids into the brilliance range, it's really, really strong. It's quite linear, quite flat. And looking at our stereo pairs, the Charge 4, it's so, so bass heavy. 
it falls away rapidly, dramatically actually. It really can't represent that original track at all, other than it has really great bass for its size. The Extreme 2, quite flat. It's quite representative with the original track. It also has, you know, a bigger bass, a fuller bass, a fuller sound, a more sparkly sound. So two Charge 4s, it does not replace a single Extreme 2. Doesn't even go as loud, it doesn't have the sound, but it does have a similar bass. So the best thing I can say about two Charge 4s against the Extreme 2 is the Charge 4s can match to a great extent the bass of the Extreme 2, but none of the rest of the sound. The Mini Rigs, in many ways, actually has the best bass of all of them. Now, it can't match the bass slam. It doesn't have the peaks of the other speakers, well, of the Charge 4s, the Extreme 2, or the Charge 3. As I said, I've tried to match sound pressure levels, so it is playing at a higher volume than most of the other speakers. For its size, it's a full bass. It does fall away a little bit disappointingly in the mids, but it makes up for it again, you know, with a decent high end. So what you don't get really from the recordings or the graph is how detailed it is. So it's so much more hi-fi than the rest in that you can pick out and follow elements of the track. Yes, it's mid-light. It's a shame that it's mid-light, but as a package, I think it's great. And as that bass, you know, I'm not playing it with the subs. This is just the two mini rigs. So I think the bass is pretty impressive really for what it is. The Charge 3 has a decent bass, has decent mids. It's probably the most accurate in terms of mids from the original track. It's really strong, but you hit 3000 Hertz and it's gone. There's no, it loses its high end. It is a shame, but that lets the speaker down. It is a thinner sounding speaker than the Charge 4, but it's clearer. The Charge 4 does sound a bit veiled. The Flip 4s, they do pretty well. Bear in mind, it's a smaller speaker. It has what looks like you know a similar bass peak, but it's like four decibels or so off the Charge 4s, the Charge 3s and the like. So it's a smaller sound, but it does pretty well given its size and it's quite strong again in, in the mids. So I thought the flips held up pretty, pretty well. Just bear in mind, it's altogether a smaller sound. I mean, none of these speakers can really match the Extreme 2 in terms of a big sound. The Flip 3s, well, <laughs> again, did really well, except that you don't have any real bass, you know, it's a, a cutoff from 100 hertz, but you know, it still holds up not too badly for what it is. So my takeaway from that is disappointing with the Charge 4s, because we really hoped having two mono speakers was going to mean something special when it came to stereo, and it doesn't really. It doesn't match the Extreme 2 other than, yes, in the bass, but none of the rest of the spectrum against the Charge 3. Okay, it's got a better bass, but the mids, the highs completely lacking, even against the Charge 3, known for its lack of highs. I think it's quite interesting. If I try and ignore the bass peaks and look at what does really well when it comes to deeper bass, forgetting the actual bass slam, which for some people is what it's all about. But if we're talking about real bass, real low bass, if we say, take the 50 hertz mark, look at what level we're getting, because you know, I've tried to match these as much as I can in terms of volume. The Charge 4s at 50 hertz, 24 decibels. The Extreme 2 at 50 hertz, 21 decibels. So deep bass, it cannot match the Extreme 2. But the Mini Rig, 21 decibels. Okay, the bass slam is like four decibels off, but that bass, that lower bass is really holding up well. To me, this was like the major find, I think, uh, from my little testing. I wasn't expected to hold up that well. I mean, I really love these these mini rigs, but I didn't expect it to hold up quite that well without its subs. It's just a shame about those mids. The Charge 3, 27 decibels. So, you know, three decibels off the Charge 4. You know, if you're choosing the Charge 4 over the Charge 3, it's all about you wanting a bigger sounding bass. And the Flip 4s, 33 decibels, as you would expect. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, it's pretty good for its size. And the Flip 3s, of course, Almost doesn't exist, but yeah, still at 35 decibels for 50 hertz, even though basically there's no peak below 100. So that was my takeaway from my little stereo pair test. So that basically wraps that up. For me personally, the Charge 4 is a disappointment in stereo. There's no, nothing magic happens, and in some ways I prefer it cleaner sounding with a little more high end as a single speaker. There's nothing that says to me, 
But this is a major upgrade over the Charles 3s in stereo. I prefer the Charles 3s in stereo. I did, you know, I have to say, I'm going to get to a, a review way down the line when I really know the speaker, which is the way I prefer to do reviews. I did say my first impressions after about 30 minutes of listening. I liked it. I thought it was a decent upgrade to the Charles 3. I tried to clarify that by saying the reality is in real life, how you perceive a speaker, it does change very rapidly over the first few days, first few hours of listening as you start delving into tracks you've heard before, the genres that you particularly like, rather than quick A, B, listen. The first thing after my first impressions that I realize is that it's becoming very tiring. It's too bass heavy for me because it has nothing else to make up for it. It doesn't have details. It doesn't have a stereo image if you're only playing one. It doesn't have a high end. There's no sparkle. It is all about thump, 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 which is good. And on the quick 30 minute listen, I thought, wow, that's so much better than the Charge 3 because the Charge 3 bass is not very realistic. It's there, but it's not real realistic. This is more realistic in that it has way more impact. But after that, there was nothing else that I could listen to. So yeah, I'll go back to my Charge 3 because I'm getting a bit more detail. I'm getting a nice mid slanted speaker. So I still haven't got the final review and I'm not saying it's terrible in any way. I'm saying though, I've gone off it from my first impressions. I found it a real one trick pony, but I'm still getting there in terms of <laughs> learning all about it. And I really need to get a second working, fully working Charge 4 to come to my final conclusions. But I think you know where my personal opinion is, is going on this. So yeah, I hope you got something out of that. Thank you for watching. UK.